Good morning and a very um, warm and special welcome to each and every one of you um, to worship on this beautiful Lord's Day. As always, it is um, such a joy and such a privilege to be gathered together to freely worship the Lord and to share together in His mighty and holy word. And whether we are gathered um, in person this morning or whether we are gathering um, on this virtual platform, um, it is my prayer that the Lord will bless each and every one of you abundantly this morning, um, that you will be filled with an unsurmountable joy as well as peace. And to that end, our call to worship is taken from Hosea and reading from chapter 14, uh, verse 1 through to verse 7. It says, Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God. Your sins have been your downfall. Take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, Forgive all our sins and receive us graciously, that we may offer the fruit of our lips. Assyria cannot save us. We will not mount war horses. We will never again say our gods to what our own hands have made. For in you the fatherless find compassion. I will heal their waywardness and love them freely, for my anger has turned away from them. I will be like the dew to Israel. He will blossom like a lily. Like a cedar of Lebanon, he will send down his roots. His young shoots will grow. His splendor will be like an olive tree. His fragrance like a cedar of Lebanon. Men will dwell again in his shade. He will flourish like the grain. He will blossom like a vine. And his fame will be like the wine from Lebanon. And with that, let us open in a word of prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, we give you thanks, Lord, for this glorious day. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of your grace, your compassion and your mercy that you have shown towards us. Knowing, Lord, that it is our sin that was our downfall. Knowing, Lord, that we were once alienated from you. Knowing, Lord, that we were once under the the rule of sin, condemned to suffer and face death all day long. And yet, Lord, you sent your one and only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, that he would die upon the cross for us, that he would save us from sin, that he would set us free. We have been washed by his blood and we just praise your mighty name this morning for what you have done for us. As we cry out, Lord, forgive us for our sins. Even as we are in you and that you are in us, Lord, we still stumble and we fall. We do and say things that we shouldn't. And sometimes we neglect to do or say the things that we should but we pray for strength and courage that you would lead us and that you would guide us. That by your Holy Spirit, Lord, you would guide us in the direction and the, along the path that you have set out before us. As individual people, as well as a church, one church united in Christ. And we pray these things now. In his mighty and his precious name. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from Revelation chapter 1. And we're going to be looking at verses 4 to verse um, 8. And um, a particular focus of um, today's reading um, you'll see is going to come specifically from verse 8. Um, but it says, 
John to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits before his throne and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the people of the earth will mourn because of him, so shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Like I said, um, as we go through this passage this morning, I want to pay very close attention specifically to, um, to the, the final verse of this beautiful passage, as it is one of those verses that when you read it, it tends to stick within a person's mind. It is one of those verses that we are so um, familiar with, one of those that, that gives us a sense of hope and a sense of peace. It is one that lets us know almost helps us to understand and know so much more about the God whom we love, the God whom we we serve, the God in whom we trust. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come. See, when we look at these beautiful words, it is easy for us to, to make sense of the beauty that these words hold in in describing the Lord, in describing the God um, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the same God who we serve today as, um, as verse 6 says, the same God who has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve God. And yet, when we look at this, these are more than just beautiful words because they denote for us this powerful existence of God himself. And there are two things that come to mind when looking at these words. Firstly, the use of two specific letters of the Greek alphabet. We know them very, very well, Alpha and Omega. And on the surface, when we look at um, these two words, it really doesn't mean all that much in the sense that there's actually no real definition um, to to these specific words, other than the fact that they are the first and the last letter uh, letters of the Greek alphabet. Um, one definition I kind of looked at um, looks at these two words as more of a, a mathematical term that is used to describe something or another. I was never very good at math, so um, you'll forgive me for not knowing exactly what they are meant to describe, but um, that's life, I guess. Um, and so outside of those two things, there's really not much that we can 
can deduce in terms of definition. However, at the same time, um, if we look at these two terms, these two words, not necessarily in terms of definition, but rather in terms of what they signify, what they point to, what they mean, we get a very different picture. We looked at alongside other words, um, we see that the term um, alpha aligns so closely to, to words such as dominant, um, chief, um, primary or, or leading. Likewise, with the word omega, it aligns closely with words like finale, the conclusion or completion. You see, this is who God is. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, and of course, everything else in between. And if he is the first, and if he is the last, and if he is everything in between, then we truly understand that he alone has sovereign rule over all of creation and throughout its history. And that's a beautiful expression for us about um, God's power and who he is. The second thing that obviously stands out in relation, of course, to the first is this phrase, who is and who was and who is to come. Again, this is vitally important for us to understand in our faith because it means that the God we serve is not some mythical idea. The God we serve is not part of some um, mythology of gods imagined by people to live in in a far-off place that is inaccessible to believers. He is a God who exists in the present. He is part of who we are as people in the here and now and dwelling within us by the Holy Spirit, but we also see him actively working within the creation that surrounds us. He is a God who exists in the past from before creation, being the one who then created all things and has been present in all of creation up until this very moment. He is also a God who exists in the future. Such is his sovereignty, such is his plan and purpose for creation. And this phrase makes known to us then that the God which we serve is outside of time, space and matter. God is omnipotent, he is omniscient, and he is omnipresent. Now, of course, we look at this and we understand, um, we understand it in terms of God being present within creation. We have seen him at work. We read about him at work um, throughout the scriptures. We have actively seen him at work within our own lifetimes. But it is more than 
God simply in creation. See, we look when we look at verses such as Jeremiah 1 chapter 5, which says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. Or possibly even um, Matthew chapter 10, verse 29 to 31, which says, Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than two, or rather than many sparrows. This is such a, a beautiful expression of God's love and care for us, not just in in the present, but throughout our pasts, as well as into our futures. And of course, this care and love is, is demonstrated for us by Jesus, who paid the price for our transgressions through which we were redeemed back to the Lord. I know that there are times where we feel distant from God. There are times where we feel like He is, is not present with us. In those times, we, we may feel hopeless. In those times, we may feel afraid and like we are completely alone. In those times, we feel like God simply does not understand the things that we are going through. And if he doesn't understand what we are going through, how can he possibly then be there for us? in those moments to comfort us to lead us to guide us there are times where we feel like we are the only people who are going through such things as if nobody throughout the the span of human history has ever faced what we ourselves are facing But I want you to take heart in the knowledge of what we have spoken about this morning. The fact that he is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the first and the last, the beginning and the end and everything else in between. He is past, present and future. He has been there. He is here now and he will continue to be there in the future, he is not limited by space or time or matter. He is omnipresent. He is omniscient. He is omnipotent. Take heart in the knowledge that the Lord himself knew you before you were born. Before you were a thought in the minds of your parents. That he knows you in the here and the now, down to the finest detail of your very existence. And in his sovereignty, he knows the plans that he has for you. He knows where you are going and how bright your future will be in heaven him and so i pray that we trust in the lord who has called us as his own people the lord who has set us apart in the service of his kingdom 
and the Lord who has set us free from sin, from death, from condemnation. We belong to God, co heirs with Christ in his heavenly kingdom. And one day we will see that in all his glory. And we will praise him forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we give you thanks, Lord, for, for your sacrifice. We thank you, Lord, for the freedom that we have in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for his blood shed for us. We thank you, Lord, for grace and mercy and salvation and peace and joy which come through him. And we thank you, Lord, that we indeed serve a mighty and holy God. For you have called us to be a kingdom and priests to serve you. You have called us and you have set us apart. You have called us by your mighty and holy name. That we would, would be a, a source of glory for you. That we would be a source of praise for you. Heavenly Father, we pray for your blessing upon us, that we would never take for granted what you have given to us, what you have called us to. I pray, Lord, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would lead us and guide us to an a deeper understanding of who you are, a deeper understanding of our role within the body of Christ, a deeper understanding of our role in your heavenly kingdom and in the service of your people. We pray that you would make us truly grateful for what we have and that we would look forward to what is in store for us in the future. And we thank you, Lord, and we pray these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Amen. Before I announce the benediction, I want to just remind you of two beautiful songs for you to go and listen to now, if you haven't listened to them already. The first is, Come Thou Found, and the second is, Is He Worthy? And I receive the Lord's blessing. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you and those whom you love today and always. Amen.